Our goal now is to solve direct translation problems. So this is one of the five types of models that we talked about. And this one's kind of a catch-all. If it doesn't belong to one of the other four categories, it's a direct translation problem. And some direct translation problems are translating from English to math. Some of them are translating from math to math. And some of them, it's simply a matter of translating the question. So we're going to start here. We're going to start with step one, which is we're going to read the, the problem. And so our problem is the sum of three consecutive odd integers results in 45. Find the integers. So we're going to look at this last sentence, find the integers. The question is, we're going to rewrite it just so that we can know what it is. What are the three integers? So notice I need to find all three of them. And I know it's three because of this right here. And so now that we've read it, we look for what we know and what we don't know. Well, we don't know what any of the three integers are, but we do know that the sum is 45. We also know that there's three of them, so we're going to need three variables. Let's call them x, y, and z. And we know something else about these three variables. They're consecutive odd integers. And a, a consecutive integer is something like 2, 3, 4. The next consecutive integer would be 5. This is just if it's consecutive. But we're not worried about just consecutive. We want consecutive odd. And so in order to be a consecutive odd, it needs to be odd. 3, 5, 7, 9. And so right here, we'd have 3. Or right here, we'd have three consecutive odd integers. But notice that no matter how we do it, we're always adding two to go one to the next. So if we let x be the smallest, then we just let x be itself. y is two more than x, and z is four more than x. And this way, if x is three, then y is five, and z is seven. And so that this that we've done right now, this is step two. We've named our unknowns. And we've turned them all into terms of x. Now, step three is where we come up with our equation. And we know that the sum of three consecutive integers is x plus y plus z. And that's going to result in, which is an equal sign, 45. So here's where the 45 comes up. So now that we've found all of our pieces, we're almost ready to solve. The problem is we have too many variables. We only want one variable. We only want x's. So we're going to rewrite this as x plus x plus 2 plus x plus 4 equals 45. Now we don't need our parentheses. They're simply there to show that the y became x plus 2 and the z became x plus 4. So if we drop them, we still have an equivalent equation. But now we're ready for step four. So here was step three. Step four is let's solve. And to solve, let's combine like terms. Use the addition property to get rid of the six. And then use the multiplication property to get rid of the 3. And we're left with, as a result, x equals 13. Now, notice that we've only found one answer. I see students do this all the time. They find their answer, say, ha, I've got it. They box it, and they move on to the next problem. And then when I come back and I grade this, I, I have to say, no. You didn't answer my question. I asked for what are the three integers. What find the integers? Notice the plural. This is only one. So I know that x is 13, but what's y? Well, that's the next consecutive, which is 15. 
and the z is the last one, which is 17. So now that I have all three, I can say this looks like it's going to be my answers. But before I say that, I need to come back and say, let's check. Is 13 plus 15 plus 17 truly equal to 45? And I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to add the 13 and the 17 together because that gives me 30. And 30, 30 plus 15 is 45. And sure enough, 45 equals 45. So I can come back and I say the integers are. Thirteen, fifteen, and seventeen. And then I just want to make sure this is nice and visible, and we've solved the problem. But again, make sure that you always stop and look at step five, and that you go back to step one and look at your equation, or what you're being asked to solve for, before you answer the question.